Well, boys and girls, this will either be the smartest thing I've ever done in Launch Dakota Blue Exotics into a huge success, or it is the stupidest thing I've ever done and will remount into this being a complete failure and all my years wasted. Let's get into it. As you guys know, we've been running Project Jungle now for a couple of months. I believe releasing videos for about a month now, and we've gone pretty far. We're up to six different builds right now, and I believe you guys have personally seen four, and I still have a couple I need to go and edit. Jungle has really opened my eyes to a lot of things. The way I've been keeping, how this is so much better, I... <laughs> I really can't explain to you guys the happiness I feel now walking into this room and the first thing I see are bioactive vivariums. It's completely awesome. It's really changed the way how I feel when I come down here. And honestly, it's changed the way that I look at my individual pets and the animals that I breed over here. And however, through this journey of Project Jungle I've taken in my last couple of months, I've noticed two big issues when it comes to, well, the most important part of a planted vivarium, that being the plants. Now, there's usually two ways people are going to go about getting these plants. They're either going to go to the big box stores, those being your Home Depot, Lowe's, anything like that, or you're going to get online from some reputable manufacturers or retailers. I get, well, are, do you manufacture plants? issues with these. They each individually have their own cons. These big box stores, the issues with them is they're not really made for animals. They're made for house plants. That being said, they're putting in subpar soil. They're riddled with mites and other insectivores and just pests in there because there's this big giant chain. Think of like reptiles by Mac, but it's plants. You're just going to get a shitty item, whether that be an animal or plants. I don't know why I shit on reptiles by Mac. I don't really know them. <laughs> This is the end of the day going to get a cheap bad product. That's going to be plants that are put into subpar soil. The plant isn't going to be the best riddled with mites and the soil itself is going to be filled with fertilizers that can be end up being harmful to your animal. To do it right now, most people are probably just going to stick it in and call it a day. That puts your animal at risk. The right way to do it is to completely flush out the roots, quarantine it for 30 days to get rid of all those pests. Now all of a sudden the build that you've been wanting to do and you got all your plants in, you got to wait another four to six weeks to quarantine their plants. Make sure you're not getting any of those mites or negative pests in there and then getting all the fertilizers, everything off. It's a huge pain in the butt and it's something no one wants to do. You have the plants, you have the items, you want to build your bio enclosure now. Side of things with these big retailers that are also giving plants online, you, you... <laughs> At the end of the day, you feel like you're getting a little screwed. You know, you end up getting getting these massive kits of six plants, and you get them in, and they're like this. And I, you get a, you can fit them in your hand. There's a handful of them, and you're like, I paid sixty dollars for this. These things just kind of suck. You know, you don't want to wait four to six weeks, but save a little bit of cash. And at the end of the day, you feel like you're spending a boatload of money for a product that seems a little. Well, it's not the size that counts. It's how you use it. Boys and girls, I made the decision that there has to be another way. And when there's another way, there's a dude stupid enough to spend all of his money trying to make that happen. And that's exactly what I did. What you're about to see right here, boys and girls, is going to be a Dakota Blue Exotics first over here. What not only we're using grow tents for reptiles, we're using it for their intended purpose, plants. That's a little bright actually. I'll, I'll just do B-roll of it. Jesus, plant lights, man probably already tell what's going on by now but uh, let's walk let's walk it through now i have invested every last cent i own into the expansion of putting dakota blue exotics in the bioactive market if you guys don't know me you're probably thinking dakota you build bio cages for a month and then all of a sudden you're you, you, i i can get the the confusion but what you guys probably didn't know is even before dakota blue exotics was dbcb exotics was jungle herps for, for about five minutes before I decide that's an awful name and I need to change it. Uh, I actually did all bioactive caging. I did custom backgrounds, the whole shabam. I don't know if I can find pictures because it's like, I don't know, a decade old at this point. But I was really into the bioactive stuff until I started breeding, which led me down this course, which led me down to being unhappy, which then led me down the course of doing bioactive cages again, which now put, puts us right here. Circle of life. Does that make a more like a twisty line than a circle, but I think you guys get it. Plants are just a small equation. While yes, we do have over 120 plants with multiple different species that would be great for bioactive enclosures, including air plants. Yeah, I got air plants too. I thought I had. I, I, you guys are gonna be like, Dakota, you got plants, so where are the air? They're right there. Couldn't fit them in the tent. I, I need to go get a bigger tent. I bought too many plants. I don't want to be that guy where you, I, the, the purpose of this and the purpose of this expansion was to be a one-stop shop where you can get everything you need. You know it's going to be safe for your animal. It's not going to have any harmful uh, fertilizers or any extra additives and it's going to be great because, well, it's what I personally use. It's not just including the plants. Right now we have some awesome new stuff over here. 
And that's not just the plants. Right here, we also have soil. Obviously, you guys have been seeing I've been doing my own soil mixes for a little bit because I didn't want to spend a boatload of cash on someone else's mix. I found out it's not that expensive to make, so I made it myself. And as you guys can see, it's been doing great in these cages. Here's my first build I did about a month with my personal mix, and it's done absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a complete bioactive mix, having everything you need for the cleanup crew to thrive, your plants to thrive. It's a nice chunky mix, so you're not gonna have like, say when you use cocoa fiber, it kind of the water just retains up and doesn't really drain down. We have a lot of nice little chunky stuff, so it makes sure there's enough air pockets for the water to seep in. All of that good stuff when it comes to plants. Oh, I also grew plants for a living. Well, you know, those kinds of plants for a living. I know my plants very well. <laughs> Why are people spending so much money on leaf litter? I'm gonna give you my own. I call this the old reliable mix. It's not as pretty as the ones that the big retailer box stores are selling, but uh, you're really gonna spend $15 on leaves, on this, this amount of leaves when you can just get this. This is gonna be like five bucks. Five bucks right here, it does the exact same thing. It just doesn't look as pretty. I mean, all in all, I still think it looks great in the cages. I think, you know, of course, if I got some magne magnelium foliage uh, dried leaves, it might look a little bit better, but uh, who in their right mind is spending $15 on some dead leaves? That riddle me that, Batman. What you can't get, you can't do a bioactive enclosure without the drainage layer. Here I got some hydro balls. It's no different than literally any other manufacturer of hydro balls, but I'm gonna sell mine for cheaper. <laughs> I'm gonna make my way into the business, just undercut the competition and not make much profit off of it. And the dusty ones that you get, I just hand wash them or hand clean them out so you're not gonna get like gross, dusty hydro balls. They've already been cleaned and cleansed and detoxified. Good. It's the clay balls. I like the clay balls better than the pebbles. It's more lightweight than the stuff I use. I've used this one on a build you guys will probably see in a week or two. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah. We're selling the substrate, the drainage layer, and the plants, but we also, of course, have our hardscapes. The cork, you can't go wrong without cork. It's an absolutely awesome thing for the plants to root to, moss to root to. Overall, I love using this in my enclosures. Always ups it for the naturalistic look, and I sell them online now. Of course, it would not be a bioactive enclosure without the cleanup crew, which is why we are happy to be offering not only isopods, but springtails as well. I don't have a bunch of the fancy ones you guys want, but if you're looking for an isopod and of course the springtail to just get the job done and make sure you have that full bioactive vivarium, then I'm the guy for you. Something you guys don't know because I've only been doing it at shows for the past little bit, I actually make little gecko kits as well. These are the ones I personally use. I like these a lot better than just your average shoebox builds. It's a little more fancier, but you're not breaking the bank doing it. That way you don't have to cut out. I have the noodles all pre-shaped. Got a nice little plant for them to hide in. I love these for my guys just for the front opening aspect. It's absolutely incredible. Comes with a little food dish as well. Just a cheap little thing where if you don't want to buy the shoebox and keep your gecko in a shoebox, but you don't want to spend $100 on an aquarium, then you can get one of these until it grows out and it's ready for that bigger enclosure. If you are looking for something a little more fancier than you just don't want to put in some plastic, I also now make custom little enclosures thing. The enclosure is not made by me, but I customize it, right? So with something like this, we have the eight by eight by 12 that I do a custom background. You get the premium soil mix, the leaf litter, and we could even do a little bundle deal as well where we throw in some plants, springtails and isopods just to make something like this a complete setup for your baby crested gecko or any gecko you get through me. Or maybe you didn't get a gecko through me and you just think this is cool and you want this for your baby. And you don't have to spend a hundred bucks on a 10 gallon enclosure or whatever. You can get one of these bad boys and it still looks really nice. Your animal's gonna love it, you're gonna love it. And then when it's old enough, you can switch that into its bigger enclosure. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, Dakota, why? Why did you do this? Why did you spend everything you own and took this massive risk on this expansion, not knowing if you're gonna be able to pull it off or not, and inevitably might end up failing the business that you've been holding on and working on for over half a decade of your life. Well, I'll tell you why. Two reasons why. Number one, I truly believe that bioactive vivariums are the way they go. Not in the sense that most people say, like, I, I'm not gonna become one of these planted vivarium dudes, like just the, the pricks on the internet and stuff like that. Like, it's not bioactive, it's awful. But the fact of the matter is there's something truly special when you make, when an enclosure, when not just the living animals in there, but the enclosure itself comes to life. You appreciate things in, it's in a different way, right? Like, it, I don't know, man. Bioactive vivariums have really opened my eyes on how I do things, how the animals are kept, and just how much better it could be for the animal itself. But for me to walk in here, I, I've said it once, I'll say it again, man. Walking in here and seeing this shelf full of bioactive vivariums, it, it's just the most incredible thing. The joy, the spark of joy and happiness I get when I see a shelf full of mini jungles, 
you can't beat it, man. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. And I wanna share that experience with others, not only in showing you guys that this is just an awesome thing, but to make sure you guys can get every single thing you want at a cost affordable price. Second reason really stems from the lack of I guess a mission, you could say, as a business. You know, everyone, every business has a mission statement. Granted, most of them are bullshit, and we know that, but I always felt like with small businesses, missions are a really important thing, and I didn't really know what mine was for the longest time. I figured it'd come around to me eventually. At some point, I'd figure out, you know, what I stand for and why I'm doing what I'm doing. But other than just loving it, there hasn't really been a thing until now. It took me this long to figure it out just for reasons of me not being very smart. I just spent all my money doing this expansion. You think good ideas form up here? What I really want to do in the path that I want to step for is the fact that you don't have to stick to the status quo. You don't have to be in the breeder box if you want to breed animals for a living like I do or make YouTube videos like I do. Y you don't have to subject the animals to this, right? Th there's a better way. I want... <sighs> I want to show the hobby that you can build these magnificent closures for these animals and still have a successful business. You do not need to sacrifice one thing for the other. They can work together in harmony and create truly a special thing. Really, the, that, that's the steps I want to start taking now. I, I want to, I mean, we've been doing it with Project Jungle, but Project Jungle has become so much more now, man. It, it's become just a silly little idea to make some nice cages into just fully integrating it into my entire business. It's, uh... It's always a weird life one walks down. I've kind of been stumbling around for a while and it's led me right here. I truly believe there's a rhyme and reason for that and this is something I truly believe in. Quick before we get into the expansion of things and what Dakota Blue Exotics is gonna look like, if this is a mission you guys also believe in and wanna see take place over here at Dakota Blue Exotics, right now we aren't currently going public on the website just because of with, with the winter weather and everything goes into that. We wanna hold off until about spring where we open a domain and all the costs and extra stuff that goes into it. However, that'll be a good thing for you guys guys. Right now you can do what I call pre-sales before the sales are live and the site is live. And that means a couple of things. Offering 20% off of what that sale would be on the site will have the sales price down in a pinned comment down there. Number two, it's going to be a little bit more personalized for you guys. So instead of say getting, I want one of these ferns, right? You get to pick the exact fern you want. I'll send you a picture of all the ferns we have available and you get to pick the specific one that you like the best. That goes for any of our other hardscapes projects as well. Cork bark, the plants. Well, I guess you can do the isopods, but isopods kind of all look the same. But it, if you want me to pick 10 isopods of your favorite isopods, and I'll do that for you because that means you believe in this mission that I'm trying to do now. If that's something you guys are interested, check the price list that we have in the pinned comment and then just shoot me a message over on Instagram, Facebook, any of my socials, or just send me an email at the, well, I'll have the email or the message contact on my website. All of those links will be in the description down below. What does the future hold for us? Well, it can go one of two ways. This thing could end up flopping and then I have very big issues that I will have to face. But you know what? I believe in it. I was a lot more confident before doing it, really thinking this is something special could take off. And then as soon as I started doing an inventory list and seeing all those dollar signs, I, uh, well, I'm a little hesitant now, but it's too late. <laughs> Let's say old Dakota did actually have a bright idea and this thing does take off. It's gonna shape this into a little bit of a different thing. Number one is going to be the breeding projects. I no longer want to breed for just just to breed, just to breed 500 crested geckos or how many crested geckos I'm gonna end up breeding this year. I don't really wanna do that anymore. I want I want my breeding projects to matter. Tokyo geckos are a great example from that because there's just not enough people doing it. The import market is so high. People are getting pets that end up having issues and that just gives them a negative experience when they're getting into this hobby. And I want that to change in a lot of different aspects. Why do I wanna breed animals that were the breeding projects actually matter. I'm not just another guy doing another gecko. I'm doing a guy, I'm one of 10, 15, whatever dudes breeding a gecko that not many people have. And you guys species of animals that haven't existed or how you didn't even know existed. Uh, forest dragons are something I've really been looking into and something I'm extremely interested in. I could already see all of these being moved, having two by two by four enclosures just all along here and having rare pairs of forest dragons. It'd be absolutely amazing showing you guys and opening your guys' eyes, the side of the hobby you have never seen before. These tiny little niches of these rare, incredible animals that really don't have the spotlight. 
I've realized that is my purpose for being in this hobby. That's what I want my mission to be and how I want to do my things. I want to breed for a purpose. I, I no longer, I don't want to be a, just another one of these handful of guys that has a thousand of these common animals and are breeding them just to make money and just to continue doing that. It, it, it's just not what I want to do anymore. I want to breed a bunch of animals to end up hatching out an egg just to look at it to see what the morphs are and then adjust a dollar sign to that animal. I want to breed animals where every time one hatches out, you're like, wow, I made this animal. This was my creation. After all the hard work of trying to figure it out, I made these tiny little things is the big reason. It's the reason I don't want, I don't want to breed animals to just sell and make a living off of. I want to do this with the plants and the bioactive stuff so I can form what I'm truly passionate about when it comes to breeding reptiles. That being said, big downsizing will be taking place depending, it, this is dependent on the success of how this Project Jungle expansion turns out. However, if it is going the way that I see it was and it's something that I think can really push forward uh, we will be downsizing very heavily starting with our crested geckos I believe there's about eight that i really just want to keep because i've they're like third or fourth generation now done by me and i really want to continue those projects specifically but i don't want to be producing anything that is in my eyes subpar Basically, if it's a 10 out of 10 in my eyes, it's staying. If it's not, if it's a 9 out of 10, an 8 out of 10, it will no longer be here. Prob I believe I've looked it down to about 8 animals will be staying. 8 crested geckos will be staying. All the other breeders will be sold off at the end of the year. This will be the big one. I, I can't really think of any of the other ones. I mean, like... I don't think gargoyles are very overbed. I believe crested geckos are a little, it's a little overdone, right? Like everyone's doing crested geckos. I, I, I don't need to be another guy doing crested geckos, right? But with gargoyles, the lychees, the chihua, obviously the tokes, we'll be using the profits from the crested geckos we downsized to upping our toke projects. I'm hoping to double our breeding stock with mutations, not just normal tokes, but have all, each one having a different mutation. So we'll be doing Patternless to Diablo, Super Red to this. <laughs> I thought I was gonna spill it, the beans, but I didn't. You gotta go on Patreon to find out what that pair is. A couple different little ideas I have for toke geckos when it comes to their behavioral and how they form just social groups. I wanna dive into that a little bit further and really witness personally how those interactions take place. I have a couple of different projects for tokes in mind with this. And we line breed two nice nice toke geckos consecutively in generations to make a friendly toke gecko there's only one way to find out well that's uh that's that's my that's my little shtick for you guys this has been about three months in the making two months it's been a while sourcing out contracts filling out orders the sponsor stuff a lot a lot a lot has taken place with Project Jungle. Now getting into actual the retail side of things and doing it myself, which is absolutely fantastic. This means I can offer these bioactive products to you guys and we continue Project Jungle in a pretty consecutively manner. Of course, of the goal being to transform each and every one of these enclosures into beautiful bioactive vivariums before the end of 2024. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day. Once again, hit me up on the socials, email, website, contact, anything you guys wanna do. If you guys are interested in seeing this mission become real Reality and seeing how the future of Dakota Blue Exotics is going to be. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Until then, goodbye.